buy a subscription to The Athletic this December and gift one absolutely free. See the link in the description for more information. The term target man conjures images of a tall and heavy centre forward, receiving long aerial passes to hold up, knock down for an advancing midfielder, or head on for a smaller, quicker strike partner. The little and large duo was a staple of English football, with tandems like Liverpool's John Toshak and Kevin Keegan, Sunderland's Niall Quinn and Kevin Phillips, or Luton Town's Mick Harford and Brian Steen. And with the decline of the 4-4-2, a formation with an emphasis on width which lends itself to that kind of dynamic, those pairings have fallen out of fashion and largely faded from view. But the target man is enjoying a renaissance, sometimes in a pairing, but more often as a lone striker. The reasons for this are largely tactical. They are the result of and the reaction against other tactical trends. So looking at the last four Premier League seasons, for which we can easily access data, it's possible to see that the number of long passes per 90 that are attempted is going up, as is the percentage of long pass completion. A long pass in this context means one longer than 27.4 metres. Now, long passes do not always equate to a target man being on the end of them, but the reason that long passes are going up is instructive. As more teams press more frequently and higher, their opponents are compelled to find a way to bypass this while also trying to keep possession. While playing through a press is one option, playing over it is another. And with a target man who can hold up the ball by bringing it down and using their strength to hold players off or bringing other players into the attack on the counter, teams can actually play longer passes from the back with a higher chance of keeping the ball. Now another reason is a change in defenders. With playing out from the back also popular, especially among stronger teams who want to retain possession, a new kind of defender is called for. The old attributes of aerial dominance, size and tight man marking are, at least with some teams, less prized than more technical and cerebral attributes. While some defenders like Virgil van Dijk combine both styles, there are now plenty of ball-playing centre-backs who might be seen as weaker in the air and less physically robust. In other words, who have flaws that can be physically exploited. So, how do teams get the most from a target man? Well, the first thing to say is that with increasing athleticism in football, most target men are far from the tall, strong but relatively immobile archetype. This means that they will not be static and will look to have balls pumped towards them, but will also be expected to run the channels, press hard and get into the box to finish moves, especially if acting as a lone striker. Passes can come from ball-playing goalkeepers or centre-backs driving angled passes upfield, which is why sometimes target men need to peel wide or from full-backs or centre-backs who push up and play deeper crosses from the half-spaces, as well as the more traditional crossing position favoured by wingers. Different formations will use target men in different ways. In a 4-3-3, for instance, a target man will likely drop off and look to flick the ball onto a quick inside forward to run onto. In the 4-4-2 or the 4-2-2-2 used by RB Leipzig, where Yusuf Poulsen was a kind of target man alongside Timo Werner last season, the aim is to flick the ball on or control it before playing ground passes to the quicker strike partner. This sometimes involves playing quite wide and then drifting in field as well. And there are other interesting variations. In Werder Bremen's 3-4-2-1, where Josh Sargent or Nicholas Fulkrog are used as target men, the foremost striker has another forward and a more creative midfielder narrow behind them, with wing-backs providing width. The target man's job is to play the ball back to the creative midfielder and then push up, create space for the second striker, or lay the ball wide to the wing-backs and get into the box. Sometimes, as with Athletic Bilbao's 4-2-3-1, the target man is actually the second striker, playing off a quicker forward. This recalls the use of Marouane Fellaini at Everton, and in urgent situations, Manchester United too. You see, football is about exploiting an opponent's weakness as much as it is playing to your own strengths, and sometimes the target man is the best weapon. If you're looking for holiday gifts this winter, we're pleased to be able to offer a buy one, gift one deal on subscriptions to The Athletic. It's world-class sports journalism with a roster of writers including David Ornstein, Amy Lawrence, Daniel Taylor and Ollie Kay. There's dedicated journalists for each Premier League team, bringing you all the latest news and inside information, not to mention hundreds of journalists doing the very same thing for 10 other sports. So, to buy one and gift one this December, see the link in the description and thanks for watching today's video.